Good afternoon all. I've not put this uh, circuit away yet because I'm still having fun playing with it and uh, there's something else I wanted to add as an update to the stuff I did in the previous video. Um, remember this uh, pattern with the uh, wire taps, the two wires that go into the exclusive OR gate on positions 41 and 38 which gives rise to this um, pattern of bits which is 2 trillion bits long, 2.199 trillion bits long. Uh, it's this number in fact, 2 to the power of 41 minus 1, so that's 2 trillion, 199 billion, 23 million, 255 thousand, 551 bits long. I mean it looks moderately random uh, once this thing gets going, but when you first started off, it's anything but random. Now, we didn't see that because I moved these two wires over to these two tap positions while there was still data in the uh, shift register array. But take a look at what happens, and I'll switch this off in preparation. Take a look at what happens, incidentally, if I don't turn it off for long enough. Spurious bits appear, which is really weird because I've got no capacitors on here. So they must be the capacitance inside the CMOS uh, circuitry. The only capacitor I've got is that, the timing capacitor for the 555. No decoupling at all. Naughty me. So take a look at what happens when I first switch this thing on. Now I want to put a single bit into the shift register array. So I want to press that really quickly. There's my single bit. And of course, because the taps are up here, nothing much changes as the pattern traverses. So the single bit changed to two bits three apart. That changed to two bits, six apart. Now we've got four bits, all three apart. Two bits, oh, quite a much larger amount apart. Each of those produces two bits, three apart. That then gives rise to that. Oh, that gives rise to this really long pattern of ons and offs. What does that achieve? Actually produces almost nothing. So it's really fascinating sitting here watching this. Not going to spend the full 10,000 years waiting for this pattern to cycle round once. Not going to do that. But let's go back to the beginning where that single bit traverses down the line and see if we can anticipate some of these patterns. Now let me just say that at this early stage of the pattern generation, when I've got a single bit running down here. This is not random. This is anything but random. It's highly structured. The single bit turns to two bits. The two bits turn to two bits, I think, six apart. That then produces four bits, all three apart. No way is this random. However, we know that every single shift of this shift register produces a 41-bit word, parallel word, and every single one of those words, and there are 2.2 trillion of them, is different. Right, let's have a look at predicting uh, some of these patterns. So I'm just going to draw a squirk it diagram of this thing. It is a shift register, um, 40 bits. Uh, you could call it 41 bits because actually on these HC595s I've got 40 bits going that way, but I've actually got one additional bit of storage going that way, kind of, because you've got the uh, shift register up there, then the storage register, then the output register. If you want me to explain how that works, I will in more detail, but for the moment, let's just imagine we got 40 bits. Oh no, that's not going to work, is it? Because I'm looking at bit 41. Right, I'll immediately call that 41 bits. And we have um, an exclusive OR gate. I'll draw it up this end. And at the moment, we're looking at bits 41, which is there. Oh, what was the other one? It's on this chart. Uh, yeah, 41 and 38. So 41, 40 is not connected, 39 isn't. So there are two in between those two taps. So let's draw that like that. And then the output of the exclusive OR gate simply goes back to the input of the 41-bit shift register. So let's imagine on this strip of paper, we've got a single bit. I'll draw it uh, there. And that bit, it's working its way down the shift register like this. Let's see what happens when that one 
because all the rest of it is zeros, reaches the first of the inputs of this exclusive OR gate. Uh, what would help this is a truth table, of course. So we need uh, the truth table for exclusive OR. 0, 0 gives you 0. Those are inputs and outputs. 0, 1 gives you 1. 1, 0 gives you 1. 1, 1 has an output of 0. Remember, the exclusive OR gate uh, has a high output if the inputs are different. So as this 1 travels down the shift register, when it reaches one of the inputs of the exclusive OR gate, we're going to have the situation where we've got 1, 0. That gives us a 1 on the output. Let's have it coming out of the output of that exclusive OR gate and going back into the input of the shift register. I probably haven't left myself enough paper here. This then carries on down, and that 1 hits the other input. So we're going to have the other way around. Uh, which did I do first? 1, 0? Well, we've got 0, 1 now. That also produces a 1. So a second 1 enters the shift register. Now, this shifts along. Of course, for a long period, we've got all zeros doing nothing. Then we have a situation where these two 1s, uh, or one of them, appears on the output of, um, on the input of this exclusive OR gate. We need to see what the output's going to do. Now, I've redrawn this because it didn't quite line up with the two inputs of this exclusive OR gate. But let's see what happens when the first 1 reaches one of the inputs of the exclusive OR gate. We know that's going to trigger a 1 to go into the shift register for that one. That then moves along. We've got both zeros at that point, both zeros at that point. But when we get to that point, the input of the exclusive OR gate has two 1s. But that also produces a 0 on the output. So nothing happens until we get to this position where the trailing one hits this right-hand input of the exclusive OR gate and produces another one on here. But they are further apart. Let's actually see that on the device itself. I'll leave it up there just for a moment. I need to leave it switched off for long enough that I don't get spurious data coming in. Let's put our one in. That one passes the exclusive OR gate produces two ones, three bits apart. They pass the exclusive OR gate and produce two ones. Uh, can I freeze that? Not in time. <laughs> I've bent my switch now. Oh, that's really annoying. Oh, and further down the line, of course, we get the situation where these ones appear probably 12 bits apart. These are three bits apart. Now they're in groups of two. These are, actually, I can freeze that. Are they six bits apart? Uh, one zero 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 one. Yes, they're effectively six bits apart. Now, interesting, I've got a whole group of um, ones coming down the line here, six bits apart. Let's try and predict what's going to happen. Well, the first one's going to trigger a one coming on the output because it only appears on one of the inputs. And we don't get that. There's another one on the output. We don't get that situation where the two ones here line up with the two inputs, producing a zero. So we're going to trigger a 1, another 1, another 1, and another 1. Let's see if that actually happens. Let's free run this. Yeah, so we effectively double the frequency and we've got twice as many 1s. Now, interestingly, when this structure or pattern passes the exclusive OR gate, we're going to get lots of situations where, um, well, in fact, all of these uh, situations are going to have whenever a one uh, lines up with this right hand one we're going to have another one on the left hand one so yes when the first of these eight ones hits the left hand input of the exclusive OR gate we will get a one but then nothing will happen all along the central section of this until the last one here hits the right hand input of the exclusive OR gate and then when they get another one so the result of this passing this exclusive OR gate is going to be one one, a very long gap, and another one much further down. Let's see if that actually happens. There's the first one, there's the very large gap, and there's the second one. And now, of course, these individual ones produce these groups of two or three apart. Brilliant. So in the early stages of building this pattern up, if I just put a single one in there, and let it run right down to the end where my exclusive OR gate is. That turns into two ones. You can see that this is not random. If it were truly random, you'd expect to see the whole thing filled, buzzing around, ones and zeros all over the place. 
not these highly structured and very predictable patterns that we're getting as the as the display as the array as the shift register fills up with more and more ones and fewer and fewer zeros i want to watch that one that one's quite interesting yeah i like that then we get two don't we and then that one will produce another two awesome now i can actually cheat this of course because if i put my one in and let that run down to the end and that produces two ones and i get bored i can simply invert long sections of this fill the display up so that it's uh, got probably a similar number ones to zeros and off it goes producing what look now like relatively random patterns now here's an interesting thing i noticed this um well during the last video and then i worked out what was going on after the last video if i put this into single step mode and single step it that's all good and fine but if i turn this pot fully this way something really weird happens all the bits light up now i don't know whether you can see that on the camera I think you can just about see it, but I think what's actually happening there is that the um, 555, now this is a 7555, a CMOS one, is running pretty much flat out because I can see little variations in brightness here. The camera doesn't seem to be picking up quite as well as I can see it. So I think, uh, and you can probably work this out, this single step is very simple. It's just uh, VCC and ground going through a couple of 1K resistors to the normally open and normally closed terminals of this micro switch. The common goes up through this switch to pin two. It's that simple. I think this is running flat out. So let's assume that the 555, the 7555 is running at about two megahertz because I think you can get these things to go at about two megahertz. I think that's clocking the shift register at two megahertz. If it is... How long will it take this pattern to repeat? That one you can work out for yourselves. Cheerio. So in the early stages of, of building this um, array of uh, the shift register array up, if you only, have I switched this thing on? No, I've frozen it. Oh, that's annoying. I didn't want that. So in the early stages of building this pattern up, if I just put a single, damn it, 